Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your April 2021 Tarot and Oracle reading. I'm Infinity and I'm excited to get into this reading. Uh, I do have to tell you, however, I did start this last night um, and then the video didn't save properly. And I didn't finish the reading though. I was in the middle of the reading and a weird message came up and I decided I'm going to stop it and start it again. But when I stopped it, like almost 40 minutes in, it didn't, it's, it's there. I just can't, you can't watch it. Can't do anything with it. It won't open. I don't know why <laughs> it's really, really weird. And I wasn't sure what to do at the time. It was nearly 10 o'clock at night. Um, and everything was going great, but that really, kind of kicked me out of my chair and I wasn't really sure what I should do if I should um, continue or start completely over again um, and I was just guided to sleep on it and that I would figure it out in the morning and we would get back into it or we would start something afresh so I have already done this but I want to show you because I have the cards here. I didn't move them from last night. We have Moonology. We have Lightseer's Tarot. We have Sacred Geometry. And we have the Archetype Oracle. So we have all those cards out already. The only card that we didn't pull yet was the Hidden Worlds Oracle. So I left everything out. And like I said, I slept on it. Still wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. So finally was guided to grab the pendulum and just ask. So a clockwise means yes. And a counterclockwise means no. So what we're going to do is just ask a very clear question here. Should I continue with this Scorpio reading? and it's starting to move it's just swinging this neutral swing is really big so it's just going to take a minute for it to really start to to move into that direction and as you can see it's starting to go um into this clockwise and it's from my perspective not yours so the clockwise um, it's so it's going like this for me. So my clockwise direction here, and as you can see, even it's getting even faster. Um, and if I stay here and I keep like probing and asking questions, let's just see here. The first card we got was Moonology. I start with Moonology cards a lot of the time, and it is a new. Let me put it. I like it. <laughs> this is awkward. Um, this is a new start is coming. A new start is coming, and so with the pendulum in hand. Let's just say our this reading and everything about it, is it about choices to make um, going forward with this new start? And can there be these two paths that can be taken that are very clear here? <laughs> Even faster. And will there be some kind of back and forth within these energies of these two paths? So yes, yes, yes. And are we guided to connect with Mother Gaia to help us through this, uh, especially connecting with Mother Gaia? And staying yes here, very strong. Okay, so <laughs> there's just a little preview of the, uh, of the cards here. So when I, when we stopped the video, 
I was just getting into the uh, the archetype cards. But what I'm going to do now is tell you about the tarot cards that we got and then the sacred geometry cards that we got and and just explain all my little questions I just got into here. So, okay. First card we got was the Knight of Wands. Happy, happy card here. Um, and really great with energy feeling that next the fool love this full card next ace of wands next seven of wands oh wait sorry five of wands i knew that was wrong five of wands then two of wands and then five of pentacles. Okay, so what's going on here is a need to release from the not so distant past. We're talking six months to a year. Um, so, or the last like, 16 months and about that 16 months to 18 months but it could be as much as three six eight you know somewhere in there where there was some type of um event that happened that made it um very uncomfortable you're very unhappy um it definitely involved others, one other, maybe more than one. Maybe it, maybe it was mostly with one, but affected many. Or it really, it really just kind of brought up a lot of not so great emotions and and feelings and energy and I'm seeing just a lot of explosive energy. Like there was not a whole lot of contemplation and thinking about you know ramifications and it was just like you know gasoline and fire just it's just instant you know kind of kind of energy but that since then there's been enough time for you to to kind of see through the ashes and the and the fire and all of that and and see that you know everything happens for a reason that you know to feel certain ways is to understand yourself more even if you don't like it and i do feel like you like you're really wanting to understand why you do what you do why you think the way you think why why things happen the way they do, why, um, just the whys of stuff, you know, there's just like this, like, okay, these situations happened, or I felt this way, and, and, like, you're, like you feel bad about how you felt. You feel bad about what you, how you reacted. You feel bad about the way that you didn't communicate and the way that you did communicate. Like if you could go back and redo it, you would in a very different way. But you can't and you know that. And I think that you also know that whoever and whatever is involved in this is not stagnant in this energy they've moved on to and there's been this like i see like an ant hill and there's all this like activity and then and then like the flame comes in and everything just scatters um and then there's that after math time of kind of figuring stuff out, kind of re-examining the, the events. 
you know, that sort of thing. Like after, usually after something really dramatic, really chaotic, people tend to you know, relive it, relive it, relive it, just thinking over and over and over about it. And you've definitely done that. You've done it a lot. And this is where it's time for those decisions to be made. It's like, at this point, you've extrapolated enough out of it or what you're going to get out of it to this point. You need to move on. And yes, maybe more can be sorted out as you move forward. But it's gotten to the point where you it really is the energies, the season, your... your guides and guardians everything is saying okay you've been in this enough like it's time to move on from this it's time to let that go it's time to not be upset angry mad judgmental shameful for yourself for other people all of it involved it's just time to just let it go just put it all in a bag tie it up put it out with the trash and move on um but as i say that scorpio we all know how difficult that is for you and so what these cards are saying with this five of swords two of swords and um five of pentacles is that if you can see we have this progression of energy here of the way that it's like he's standing he's sitting but he's still sitting up and then and then like hunched over um and then we have up here knight the knight of wands the fool and the ace of wands a very different energy here on the top just saying look there's i feel coming in with this knight of wands it's like you still, even though these things happen, I think that you still feel like there's enough going on. There's enough that's happened. There's enough progress that's taken place, even through some quite explosive situations that... You, you see why things... You, you're like, like, you're not necessarily happy about the situation and you would want it to be different if you could make it different but at the same time it's like i get it and i do need <laughs> my computer <laughs> interesting let's see here okay I'm um, sorry about that. My computer's just like kind of skipped there. I want to make sure it's okay. So anyway, there's this like, okay. So we had another stop in the recording. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. But anyway, here we are again. Um, so what I was saying was like, it was like you get, you get it. It's like you, you would change things if you could, but you get you understand why things played out the way they did. You see your part in it. Um, you see where you would do things differently if you could. Um, but again, you can't. And so you just need, it's like, again, you need to, to let go. You need to, like this full card is, is like all about that. Letting go, moving forward, um, being really faithful about the the future and um as far as you know following guidance your your third eye your um your connections with you with the divine with your guides and guardians is definitely strong um i think that you do go through periods where you forget to ask for help um and support and guidance and i think there are times where you do and when you do you get answers and and all that but but it doesn't 
it doesn't last. It, it's like you don't have yet a, a set kind of meditative practice, um, that sort of thing. So you can dip into this like feeling good and moving forward and letting things go and then something happens or something reminds you of something or you see something or someone and you're back to reliving this stuff again. And so remember the very first card that we got was a new start is coming with this new moon energy. It's really great new moon energy. And it's like, you know, we really can be and feel excited about the future. There is a lot coming in, a lot of happiness for the future, but you have to make these decisions to allow that to happen. And then next we get the uh, wisdom card with our sacred geometry. This is the sacred geometry oracle. And I have the wisdom card here, gain greater insight. So let's get into that. It's the last card of this deck. Okay, gain greater insight from the shadows into light. Through the shadows of the darkness, an owl, owl flies through the night, deep in the forest, comforted by the knowing of his surroundings. Owl brings clarity, perception, wisdom, attunement, all-knowing, and protection. When this card appears, you need to go into the depth of the shadows to release all energetic all energetic imprints that no longer serve you from the shadows into the light open your heart to receive and give with the purest of love and intention open your mind to acknowledge and and sorry to knowledge and understandings you never thought possible and sacred geometry the merkaba within is our chariot awaiting when it when in its ultimate counter-rotating spin, it allows access to ancient wisdoms to help us on our paths to full awakening while keeping us on our path. It reawakens our pineal gland and our light codes which lay dormant within our DNA strands. And if you haven't yet done the uh, April 2021 meditation, we do work with the Merkaba. We work with... Um, we work with Gaia, we work with the sunlight codes, we work with um, uh, crystals, but we definitely work with the Merkaba. So if you haven't yet done that meditation, please check it out. Okay, wisdom holds a deep connection to the feminine divine. It accesses the ancient knowledge of Mother Earth and the inform. Excuse me. I'm not tired, it's just... I yawn, I get itchy in my head especially, and um, those two things happen when I start to really connect. And I also get like popping in my ears, but you wouldn't see that. Um, and uh, today, especially my third eye is really pulsating. Today's 4-4, it's the Stargate start today. It's also Easter, so there's a ton of energies coming through, really high vibrational energies coming through. Um, feeling Jesus a lot here today with that energy and people tapping in with his energy. So anyway, um, I've had these like sneezing fits. I've had a lot of releasement coming with my third eye yawning when I like big time yawning when I start tapping in um, itching and popping of the ears and all this kind of stuff so just so you know that's the kind of the way it goes around here okay um it accesses the ancient knowledge of mother earth and the information she has passed on to those who choose to listen and work with her energy right here the presence of ayahuasca which is uh quash Shua for vine of the soul or vine of souls enhances your ability to connect to this intelligence as she is truly loving and caring as a mother can be. And practical application, owl medicine helps work through our etheric layers working as a vacuum by clearing and sorry, clearing and cleaning old debris 
and filling each space with light. Picture a light bulb turning on and shining light and clarity into these spaces. By shifting your energy, you will feel yourself connecting to source easier. And card numerology is 11. And crystal suggestions, Merkaba, Lumerian Quartz, Selenite, Apophyllite, Herkimer Diamond, and Amethyst Brandberg. And one thing I wanted to just say is um, kind of tune into the owl's eyes here. They're nice and bright. And um, if you want to use the owl medicine, the owl essence to help you clear energy. Um, and I'll probably do a meditation on this. It keeps coming up. Um, since I got this card last night, I keep thinking about it, where um, if you get into a meditative state and see yourself like when you're, and this would be to lay down and lay, lay down, sorry, lay down and imagine the owl starting at your head and, but going into your body as though it's flying over terrain and mountains and all sorts of stuff in different places with different elements going on and so how it would you know go into like starting at your head and fly around your head and go down your throat and through this shoulder and this arm and what you know and just to shine a light on the energy of your body and just imagine it flying throughout your whole body um, like I said, I'll probably do a meditation with this. Um, I keep, I really, every time I think about it, the, every time I think about it, the visuals are very, very detailed and I can just see it really, really well. So anyway, um, and just in general, tap in with the energy of owls um, that is a very strong animal totem or a spirit animal for us because, uh, or they, I should say, they, they do have that like wisdom and seeing in the dark and all of those wonderful energies that come with owl that wh however it resonates with you, it's, it's like my main spirit animal um but we have many and gaia speaks to us through the animal kingdom through the plant and insect ki kingdoms as well and the animal kingdoms is pro or kingdom is is like the bigger one because we can relate so much to animals and animals are in our lives and we pay attention to animals so much so so um she does speak to us through the animals and different ones at different times like what a an owl will tell you versus a spider versus a goat versus a lion versus a giraffe versus a squirrel versus a rabbit versus an alligator versus a koi fish all of them have different messages different energy and she speaks through them to us just like a rose has a different message than a daffodil you know things like this very similar so it's to tap in with this energy of owl and um and merkaba so think about your merkaba and oh my goodness it keeps glitching out i apologize so just think about owl and merkaba when it comes to um this card Okay, and in generally, generally, Mother Gaia, nature, being in nature, um, if you can go out into nature in the evening, in the daytime, at least for a few minutes, um, if you're not spending, you know, a ton of time, um, it'd be great if you could, but, you know, not every day we can spend hours outside. For some of us, we need to be inside doing other things, but to, to really try to dedicate some time to going outside and connecting with nature would be fantastic. Um, okay, so next up, what we got was our... Uh, 
Kim Cran's archetype cards, and we're working with just the selves for the archetype, so all the different selves we could be, and then the tools. So the way that she, uh, the way that she has them split out is the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations or the themes um, are and they're all the archetypes that we can well there's so many more archetypes there's like many many different archetypes she even says it herself she had to cut it down she had to cut like more than half of what she had all conjured up for different archetypes so but with what she has here we were just working with the two with the selves and so the destroyer came up with the selves And so there's the destroyer, and then the ring came up for the tool. The ring. So it's a whole bunch of rings. And um, with the destroyer, we have um, just those like wolf eyes with the light there, and a and a circle, a ring. And that was also something that came up that I brought up in. Um, oh, well, the ring came up. Actually, that was in another. Well, not really. It, it's, it's, it's this, it's here too. Cause we have, we have the new, we have the new moon, but we have this very distinct circle, uh, um, or ring. We have the ring. We have this ring with the flower of life here that the fool is falling into. We have the globe here. Right here we have the globe that's sticking out to me. And with these five of pentacles, obviously we have these five circles. We have the ring and we have a ring here around this the with the destroyer so there's this it's something it like coming things are coming into a again a new a new start is coming it's like a new day tick 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 all the things that can happen in a day from midnight to 11 59 p.m from midnight you know 12 o'clock all the way and it's it's like turning things over but let's get into the destroyer okay the savage the unexpected the rejected the destroyer the final of the three archetypes in the trio of existence has necessary yet painful work to do in the world culturally we have an uh, aversion to endings and we hang on to permanence as a signifier of success very true. Yet the destroyer pulls the rug out from underneath relationships, jobs, homes, and all forms of security. It's the part of us that wants things to end. Its painful orientation is to uncover true purpose. The destroyer does not let us linger long in comfort as it knows not much happiness in that realm. With its piercing eyes, it seeks out stagnancy from a distance and the rest becomes history in the old myths this is the moment when, when heads begin to roll the ground opens up the castles crumble hold on for the ride the destroyer has arrived <laughs> oh boy like the destroyer comes in to make sure the tower moment is going down <laughs> basically when light shift the uh shift sorry swift and precise blows that redirect our life self-destruction negativity and willingness to rebuild is for the dark like if we're in light and we're in the dark and consider picasso's statement every act of creation is first of all an act of destruction in old tales the destroyer sometimes appears as a black dog other times it takes the form of gods and goddesses such as Shiva, Kali, and Apophis. Okay, so. I feel with this destroyer card that. There's. 
that's like whatever the situation was because this definitely feels like a, a was thing that this destroyer energy is still lingering it's still it's still part of your universe here clearly um there's just more that needs to 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 take place within you there's more healing that needs to be done there's more sorting out there's more um acceptance there's more realness there's more authenticity there's more knowing of yourself and what you're doing here and your purpose and all that stuff and remember a new start is coming so it's it's like what's great about that means it's kind of more like the your readiness willingness to have a new start is is here it's like i'm ready for this um in in at least one sense it's like you're not fully letting go of everything um i think you wish that you could do more say more sort it out something you know just make it all go away quite frankly just have it i think that you would you would be like oh if it could n none of it could ever have existed that would be great but then you sit there for a minute and you're like but then you know i wouldn't have this 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 and this and i wouldn't know this 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 and this and i wouldn't have this understanding about so many other things and so you start to kind of go okay you know like and then you realize you don't really have a choice in the matter. It's, it is what it is. It's your decision to accept it, reject it, let it go, take from it, extrapolate the good, sift out the bad. A new beginning happens every day. A new start is every single day. So you can decide how the next day is going to go. It's totally up to you. Do we go higher vibration with this Knight of Wands and the Fool and the Ace of Wands? Or do we go lower vibration with the Five of Swords, the Two of, of Wands, and the Five of Pentacles? Because they're very different, remember. We have this timeline active and definitely able to tap into easily and we have this timeline where it's very different energy and it's just up to you which way you want to go and obviously the top higher higher lane here this top row of your tarot cards would be the optimal way for you to go um, okay, anyway, let's get into the ring. Here we go. Okay, the infinite, the wheel, the connection. The ring is an image of connectedness. Rather than viewing life as linear, as a series of progressive achievements, the ring challenges us to sense the cyclical, infinite nature of our world and experiences. Beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we practice seeing ourselves as part of the cosmic circularity of creation. For this reason, it's no surprise a ring is worn on the finger to represent eternal love that surpasses space-time and worldly things. So much can be projected into this archetypal image because it mimics the Earth's orbit around our great sun and the intimate bond between two lovers. It is the micro and the macro united. This card calls us to deepen connection with self, other, and the world at large. Meanwhile, there may be a literal ring awaiting to adorn your finger. When light, connectedness, humility, sacred cycles, when dark consciousness rep unconscious repetition starving for connection and take stock of the jewels you adorn yourself with watch out for rings you wear out of habit that keep your you connected to the old you and study images of the mandala the anus mundus the orobos and the medicine wheel so yeah uh let's okay so let's start here 
Um, I think to see this situation and yourself and yourself progressing forward as and as part of something bigger than just this situation, than just you and this other person, let's say, that it's there's so much more connected to it, I feel, that also is something that you think about a lot. And I think you think, like, did I make, you know, things end there before getting, you know, what I was meant to get out of it or something like that. Um, that there's more to it that you, you know, closed off. And to be honest, I think the answer would be yes, but everything happens for a reason. Everything, you know, is cyclical. Everything is cyclical. Everything is infinite. Everything transmute. Everything happens for a reason and goes round and round in this way. And we need to just allow for that to happen because you're thinking and thinking and thinking about it. You trying to replay all these different possibilities of what you know, what you know, what you see, what, what all, you know, what, and what is actually there are two different things. And there's only so much perspective you can have in this situation. But know that this situation is one that definitely needed to be. It was meant to be the way it was meant to be. And nothing is finite in this story, in this world, in creation. Nothing is finite. Every energy that ever was is still circulating in creation just transmuted into something else and so if your if this situation it you know it did come to an end a new beginning is starting you get to decide which way you're going and let the continuous flow of you know the nature of things go on don't don't build a dam there because you're stuck you know, thinking about and dealing with the past and still working that out. You know, you can still move forward and heal from the past and still try to, you know, as you move forward, sometimes we get greater perspective about the past and it makes it so much easier to move on from it instead of, you know, staying in that one spot. Okay, nextly, let's get into our Hidden Worlds Oracle and see what we get here lovely scorpio whoa um because i feel that we need to we need some levity like we need it would be great if you could take a vacation go someplace and just meditate and be in nature and so if you can do that if you can get away by yourself Take a little road trip, rent someplace for a week or a weekend, just be in a different environment, I think would be really, really, really helpful for you. I think that, that you need to come back home and feel different energy within you, around you. You need to bring stuff from someplace else. I think you just that that would be very helpful i'm seeing this for you i think that would be very helpful either go someplace that you're familiar with or go someplace totally new that's really going to um draw you in and get your all your senses alive and crackling and into things there's 
Or maybe you could do both. Maybe you could take a road trip someplace that you've been before and feels really comforting and you like it and you know you like it. And maybe you can go someplace that you've never been before as well on your trip and check out something totally new. I think that would be really good for you. Okay. And, oh, this is lovely. Um, this card is card number 22, Insight, Magical Tools, Writing, and uh, Star Crafting. I love this card. So let me grab the book here and let's, whoopsie, let's get into card number 22, Insight. Whenever I see this card, I always think of, of Merlin. It's got some serious Merlin energy and I always think of my glass my glass pens too because it's always it feels very magical to write and create with my glass pens okay here we go magical tools writing star crafting from which mystery does insight arise from what place do the words flow and how can we connect so deeply that we write of the stars and their secrets Perhaps we would do well to be like the wizard between the worlds who draws down the energies of all that is above and somehow weaves it into this world below, combining all that is celestial with all that is terrestrial. In those moments when we connect truly deeply, we can literally become the link between the world and through us can flow a pure and clear energy, a wise energy which can guide and comfort and enlighten and a compassionate energy. So believe it or not, we had to stop in the video again. So we're going to pick right back up here. A wise energy which can guide and comfort and enlighten. A compassionate energy that can see beyond, uh, beyond difference and find communion with those with whom we share this remarkable world. It is time to connect deeply and find the quiet in between time so you too can take up the pen and write, sit quietly and connect and feel the flow of energy that is the proof of your belonging, not only to this world, but to the worlds that lie beyond the sight of your eyes. You are one who can share the knowledge. You can write of the stars. You can understand the power of the pen, of the words that flow of the magical tools that can gather about you. This is a time to grow stronger in your magical work, to learn how to use the scrying ball, to work by the soft wonder that is candlelight, to turn your gaze towards the stars and draw down the wonder to reveal what others cannot see in your works. Be the wizard who creates the bridges between the worlds. Alchemize the seen and the unseen. And let the wisdom pour through the pen and into the words that will flow out of you. And illumination. I am an instrument of the divine. Which pours through me and into the world. Oh, lovely. I love this card so much. It just reminds us to... Uh, to give ourselves space to get that connection to be connected like that um, that we are we are an instrument of the divine we were created to create and we were created to create through the connections of the divine and to be open to receiving to receiving the energies that come in that help us to create that help us that guide us to places to the tools to the people to the crystals to the pens to the journals that inspire us to to write to inspire us to document to inspire us to just witness i think would be um also important like i said at some point here um, that it would be really great for you to um, get away, get into a different space energetically for an extended amount of time by yourself would be really, really, really helpful. Um, as we can see in all of these cards, this per there's a person who is by themselves 
in every one of these scenes. There isn't another person and um not in the Knight of Wands, there's a horse. In the in the fool, there's a crystal. <laughs> With the ace of wands, there's a flame. With the five of wands, there are uh, crows. And with the two of wands, there's a globe and a couple of wands and a window. And with the five of wands, I mean, sorry, the five of pentacles, there's some sunlight, a door, and those five pentacles. But in none of these cards is there another person. And if you're like, wait a second, let's go back to that five of swords. I this isn't another person. This is the same person. But this is the same person, however, moving on from this. So, again, you have the choices here of, wh of what you're going to do. And even with this, with this Knight of Wands, it's like alone, one horse is there. So, it's not like they're showing you a group of horses for you to be like, oh, but, you know, we can see that there's other people. No, it's one horse, one person here. You're meant to be a alone for a time to figure this stuff out and not be distracted by others, not be pulled into other energy or them to be pulled into your energy because your energy is not, I would, I would say with the energy of the destroyer that I would, I would, I would, with the energy of the destroyer, with this energy of insight, with the energy of the ring, with the energy of wisdom, these these are all like talking about these big infinite connectedness. Um, the destroyer is about change. And again, we started here with the new start is coming. The destroyer is like the person, the archetype, the energy that pushes the tower over. And the tower is about deconstruction and reconstruction, the infinite nature of the world creation our lives evolution you know what we do <clears throat> and wisdom all about opening up tapping into the merkaba opening up to the divine opening up to gaia and to the wisdom and letting yourself be guided that's that's true wisdom wisdom isn't knowing everything wisdom is knowing how to be guided there's a lot of patience that takes place with that. So if you find that you're somebody who doesn't, who has a hard time with being patient, with waiting, for being in line, for you know anything that requires patience, if you're like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's, if you're always like in that type of energy, this is another th thing coming through right now, saying it's really time to tap in with that inner wizard. Who, if we think of the wizard, we don't. We don't think of like the, 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 the wizard archetype being somebody who's rushing around, who's impatient, who's let's go, let's go, let's go, and, and not enjoying the moment. Wizards are very slow and methodical and, and quiet and, and um, introspective and mindful, and they have that kind of energy. That's what's needed from you, Scorpio, is to slow it down and get into a place where you can be by yourself, get meditative, um, listen to some high frequency music, and um, and if you can journal, if you can write, that would definitely be the way to go. Just start writing. Just start writing from 2020. And think about, and there's either, there's got to be stuff there for you to, to pick apart. And, and just go from there. Just let it be a free flow kind of thing. Whatever comes up for you, let it come up for you. It doesn't, I don't think about grammar. Don't think about spelling. Don't think about structure. Don't think about being a writer. This isn't about being a writer, Scorpio. This is about writing your, your story, your feelings, journaling, scribbling, you know, saying, writing fuck 20,000 times if that's what feels good to you, whatever. But I'm really feeling that this, 
needs to come out and that and that I'm also feeling like you don't really have somebody yet that you feel comfortable really talking to it's that's kind of been a, a thing for you like you're not one to really go to other people and talk about your issues or your problems or <clears throat> what you feel or you know situations that are private or whatever so this would really help you also connecting with your guides and guardians talking with them of course um you know calling in your archangels but really connecting with your guardian angel that is really truly that the the theme for april for the april stargate is connecting with your angelics connecting with especially your guardian angel and um but archangels and and just being close to that supportive loving energy that we all have at our disposal we just need to remember to ask we just need to remember to open the door invite them in engage them so they can help us they always show me this like being there but being there with their hands behind their back and until you say, I need your help, or I want to talk to you, or can you be with me while I take a walk, or whatever, are their hands untied, and then they can really, really help you. Okay, lovely Scorpio, thank you for being here for this wild and crazy ride that is your reading this month. I'm sorry for all the stops in the video. Um... <laughs> don't really know what to say about that it just is what it is but i hope you have a beautiful april dear scorpio you definitely deserve it give yourself some time and um step into the future with a happy lighter heart one that's filled with love because you are loved deeply you have a lot of support and love and guidance you just need to tap into that and let that fill your world with that said Bye for now, Scorpio. I hope to see you soon. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I do Terra and Oracle, meditations, energy updates, and I'll be coming with art and lives and all sorts of fun stuff here in the future. So I hope you'll be a part of it. And don't forget to check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. And that's it for now. Have a great day. Bye.